divided by... New emergency crystals pop and fizz when you throw them back. And who doesn't love a good throwback? New emergency crystals. Throw it back. Tomorrow on ET, we're counting down to Barbie with Margot Robbie and Ryan Gosling. It's happening now. A surge in shootings plaguing our streets up next here from community members who express their concerns and potential solutions on the escalating battle against gun violence gripping our city. The heat is on. We'll talk about how hot it's going to get and how hot it's going to feel when you factor in the humidity and look back and compare this summer so far to some of our hottest in just a bit. After making his debut in a Spurs uniform and playing two games in Las Vegas, Spurs top draft pick Victor Wimbanyama is shutting it down for the summer. We'll tell you why coming up in sports. KSA 12 News at 5 starts right now. And first at five tonight, enough. People across the San Antonio neighborhood have had it. They cannot take any more violence. Yeah, they spoke with our Jonathan Coto about suffering through two shootings last Friday and yet another one today. Too much hate, too much anger, too much like not acting without thinking and that like carelessness, like don't care what, you know, it's, it's a lot of hate. It's a lot of hate. People on the south side reacting to the increase in gun violence throughout our community. On Friday, shooting on the lanes of Highway 90 between General Hudnell and Sarsa Mora, leaving a man with multiple gunshot wounds. It seems like every day there's a shooting here. There, there's there's a road rage. We got victims of road rage one time, and it was scary. I had the gun actually pointed at me one time. So it's very scary. Also on Friday, another shooting on the south side, this time at an ATM. Police say a man shot and killed two people who tried to rob him. The shooting happened at a Chase Bank near Southwest Military Drive and Interstate 35, not far from South Park Mall. It's really concerning. It's scary to have to, you know, walk around alone and make sure you're aware of all your surroundings and different things like that. And today, another shooting at a Southside Hotel off I-35 near Southwest Military Drive just before noon. They say a 31-year-old man was shot three times and was taken to Bamsey in critical condition. Now there, there, there's way too many guns out in society. And I believe that's what's fueling the violence, not only here in, in San Antonio, but in, in, in the country. Meanwhile, people we talk to believe law enforcement is doing what they can. I think there's, there, there's only a certain amount that they can do. Policy needs to change at the top. And they suggest a possible solution is quite simple. You know, it's like you say, you know, if there'll be less guns, it'll be less crime. If there are more guns, there'll be more crime, there'll be more violence. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. <clears throat> Some major news coming out of Austin today. Lawmakers say they have reached a deal to finally cut property taxes for Texas homeowners and businesses. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick and Texas Speaker of the House Dade Phelan released a statement about it this morning. In it, they outlined the deal, which proposed a $18 billion tax cut. Here's the breakdown. $12 billion will be used to reduce school property taxes for all homeowners and business properties. The proposal calls for people with homestead exemptions to receive a $100,000 cut. The deal would create a three-year pilot project where non-homestead properties, both residential and commercial, valued at $5 million or less, would get a 20% reduction in their appraised values. And lastly, the deal also includes savings on the franchise tax for small businesses, along with adding new positions on local appraisal boards. By the way, those new positions on those boards will be elected by the voters. You. So now we're hearing from Governor Greg Abbott on all of this. If you remember, he had made cutting property taxes a priority. He called it an emergency item just before the regular Texas legislative session began. And here's what he said today. He released a statement which reads in part, quote, I look forward to this legislation reaching my desk so I can sign into law the largest property tax cut in Texas history. End quote. Now, that deal is expected to pass this week. It's aimed at saving homeowners money. As you know, property taxes fund public schools. So if the schools in your neighborhood get less money, what happens to them? Property tax compression is going to have to be halted or the state's going to have to find increased taxes. 
Now, in a new case, that explains we break down how this property tax relief plan is going to affect funding for public schools. Some people argue that cuts are going to save property owners in the short term, but it's actually going to end up costing more in the long term. Case that explains is today on the news at six. A big announcement from a local state senator. Roland Gutierrez wants to take on Ted Cruz, but first, He's got to win the Democratic nomination. I sat down with Gutierrez just a few hours ago to talk about his U.S. Senate ambitions. His campaign released this video this morning to make the announcement that he was running. He's in. He's been a San Antonio City Councilman, a member of the Texas House, and currently the Texas Senate. Uvalde, part of his district, and he has been a constant in trying to get answers from law enforcement about what happened during the mass shooting at Robb Elementary. That role in his effort to raise the minimum age to buy assault weapons earning him statewide and national media attention. I am frustrated with where we are in this country, where we are with public servants that want to divide us rather than bring us together and solve problems. And Ted Cruz is right at the center of all that. More on my conversation with Gutierrez coming up at 6 and 10. By the way, current Senator Ted Cruz's campaign released a statement after the Gutierrez announcement saying, quote, we welcome Senator Gutierrez to the race. Texans will now get to watch Colin Allred and Roland Gutierrez slug it out for who can be the most radical leftist in the state, end quote. Congressman Colin Allred from Dallas also running for the Democratic nomination for U.S. Senate. His campaign tells us, quote, our campaign is laser focused on beating Ted Cruz, and we are happy to welcome anyone who shares that mission into this race, end quote. In other news, tonight the teenager accused of killing a man and injuring four other people during an MLK Day celebration is headed for trial. That's O.L. Wallace, and he is charged with murder and four counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. If you remember, that shooting happened January 17th of last year. Investigators say that 61-year-old Johnny Mobley was fatally shot in the 400 block of Spriggsdale where an MLK Day gathering was taking place. Now, police think that Wallace, who was 18 years old at the time, fired his weapon into a crowd of up to 60 people. Four other people were hit, but they survived their injuries. Wallace was in court today for a plea deadline hearing. If you're done discussing your case, there's no more negotiations. I respect that, but I'm not going to take any plea bargains after today. So jury selection for this case is going to start this Friday. Witnesses are expected to take the stand July 31st. If he's convicted, Wallace faces up to life in prison. A San Antonio man accused of trying to outrun sheriff's deputies in Zavala County in a Porsche winds up arrested and charged with human smuggling. Deputies say they tried to pull over Brito Hernandez Leosbo on Highway 83 near Crystal City last Wednesday. They say he refused to stop and instead hit the gas pedal with speeds reaching 112 miles per hour. Deputies used spikes to try to stop that car. They say several people actually bailed out and took off running at one point. Despite blown tires, deputies say Leospo actually drove off again, but the car eventually stopped at a ranch. And as you can see there, he was taken into custody. Now across America, former USA Gymnastics doctor Larry Nasser being treated after he was stabbed 10 times at a federal prison in Florida. That attack happening yesterday. Authorities say that Nasser is in stable condition. They also say that corrections officers were the ones who saved his life. Back in 2018, if you remember, Nasser was sentenced to up to 175 years in prison after more than 150 women and girls said that he sexually abused them over the past two decades. To California now, where a major landslide or land shift is destroying homes. Take a look at the damage. It's happening along a canyon in the Rolling Hills Estates area. On Saturday night, some 16 people living in that area were given 20 minutes to get out. Some homeowners say last week they started hearing cracking sounds. Gas and electricity utilities had to be cut off in the area. More homes may be at risk as the land continues to crumble. At this point, it remains unclear what's actually causing the shift. Wow, from one place to another. Let's go to the Northeast now where historic flooding has killed at least one person. It's also damaged tens of millions of dollars worth of property. And here's the thing, it could get worse. Yeah, just look at this video behind us. Right now, rescue teams are in multiple states trying to evacuate people trapped by all this flooding. Other flood victims are being told to find higher ground and hunker down until hope can arrive. Laura Aguirre has the latest developments. 
This is the new normal. New York State, back in the epicenter of extreme weather, just days after savage July 4th storms. The governor there mobilizing resources and declaring a state of emergency in Orange County, where one woman died after being swept away by fast-moving floodwaters. In West Point, New York, many roads have turned into rivers, with rainfall levels there being called once in a millennium. Forecasters predict up to two inches per hour could fall in some areas through Monday. This is devastating. This used to be a stream and now it's a roaring river. Many residents in New Hampshire and Vermont can only watch helplessly as rushing water ravages property. It's not just the initial damage, it's the wave, the second wave and the third wave. And we're trying to anticipate that. Well, I just watched my car just swim away. In Reading, Pennsylvania, a daily rainfall record set in 1952 was shattered by an inch and a half. And millions of people remain under severe weather alerts in the region through Tuesday morning. New York's governor blames a broader issue for the floods and says all levels of government must work together to address it. How we can stand up and it, using every bit of our power mobilizing to fight the ravages of climate change because again these are unprecedented weather events that keep hitting us over and over and over again. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. And it's typically this time of year where even severe thunderstorms start to push farther northward opposed to here in Texas. But you can see a little bit of severe activity possible eastern Colorado all the way to Omaha, Nebraska. Around here, West Texas seen some rainfall and even New Mexico monsoon season kicking in. But around here, we can't drum up a shower. Now there's a 10% chance tomorrow afternoon. That's for the hill country and the Edwards Plateau. An isolated, brief, insignificant shower is possible farther to the north tomorrow. But that's it for the foreseeable future. Dog days of summer, they're here. 100 Eagle Pass right now in Talia's backyard. Leon Springs 98, 104 in Floresville and Shirts. Myco as well, 104 and even near Lavernia. 104 in Rogers backyard. We're feeling the heat. We'll talk more about how hot it's going to get, how hot it's going to feel in the days ahead and the dust. Is it overhead now and where's when will it get here in just a bit? Thank you, Adam. All right. It's not football weather, but we're going we to talk, talk about it. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're already looking ahead to this year's KSAT pigskin classic. It is even bigger than last year because we added an extra night of football. There'll be one game on Friday, August 25th. Three games on Saturday, August 26th. Tickets are on sale now. KSAT insiders can get the VIP experience with the best seats in the house. Just head to KSAT.com for more information, and we are all looking forward to it. Check out traffic right now. I-35 at Pine, and you can see some type of accident there. Actually looks like the police cruiser and those fire trucks are protecting whatever's happening there off to the left side. Again, not exactly sure what's happening. A tow truck just arriving on the scene. Some type of accident at I-35 in Pine. It's heavy in both directions, but especially in this direction, you can tell that things are slowing down because of that accident. Now, we still want you to stick around here because now is the time to get more bang for your buck before school is back in session. We're going to break down the deals and the discounts that all students can take advantage of. That's after the break. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom, and here's what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock today. Some huge companies using their power and their platform to try to end veteran suicide. Today at 6, why USAA leaders and families who have lost loved ones believe that some lofty goals can actually be met here. Plus, a fire at a southeast side church left the pastor and his congregation scrambling to find a place to hold Sunday services. We'll hear from that pastor about what happened here and why he believes this could have been so much worse. These stories and more coming your way today on the News at 6. Thank you, Myra. Even in summer, it's part of the college experience, figuring out how to pay for everything. Fun. There's rent, food, student loans, doesn't even leave that much left over. Not at all. But here's the good news. There are plenty of discounts for students. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz tells us where to find them. 
It was Money 101 for Claire Verrilli, a lesson in how expensive college life can be. You forget about the little things, just going out to dinner, getting new clothes. So first semester, I blew it. Now she tries to make every penny count. Students can get at least 10 to 15% off everything from retail to entertainment to food, unlocking hundreds of dollars in discounts. Some food stores and restaurants near her campus offered 10% off, but Uber Eats and DoorDash have deals too. When it comes to tech, Apple and Samsung offer discounts on certain smart products. Adobe Creative Cloud Plan gives 60% off for first-year students. Check out student savings at AT&T and Verizon too. There are also entertainment deals. Hulu, Apple Music, YouTube, Spotify, and Pandora all offer price breaks for students as much as 75%. And for $7.49 a month, Amazon Prime student has video, music, free delivery, and deals on travel. Keep in mind, students normally have to verify their status with an academic or .edu email or with proof of enrollment. I need to get new outfits for game days or just social events. And retailers like Levi's, Madewell, J. Crew, Nike, and Target offer student discounts on clothes. For clothing, it's nice when there is a discount. My advice, most anywhere you shop, go ahead and ask if there's a student discount. Now, one more thing as you begin your back-to-school shopping, mark your calendars for August 11th. That begins the weekend for tax-free shopping in Texas for most clothing, shoes, and school supplies. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Okay, let's keep talking about the deals because I just had to confirm this and check this out. Amazon Prime Day is tomorrow and Wednesday, so you can save there too. There just you go. saying. Yeah, I'd rather talk about that than the weather. Yeah, <laughs> right even though because it does it's look all, pretty. It's 102 degrees out there. It looks pretty, Golly. Adam. Throw, but some, I, throw some shade at your meteorologist I'm over. Just <laughs> saying, you know, <laughs> I don't really want to talk about 102, but I know we have to. Well, we're going to talk about 103 then, okay, Ooh, Steve? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh -huh. I got him right. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at our forecast. 103 tomorrow. We'll be around 102, 103 the rest of this week. And hey, we might even drop to 101 by Sunday and Monday as the upper level heat high slides a little farther to the west. But you know, what's a degree or two amongst friends? You don't really notice the difference much. It's more psychological when you're around that century to mark. 103. See, Steve, we're talking 103. That was our high temperature today. Del Rio made it to 104 along with Creasel Springs, Catula topped out at 105. Last year, by this day, we had 32 100 degree days. So far this year, 16. Hey, that's an improvement if you ask me, but obviously there's a lot of summer to go and we'll be tallying up those triple digit days. Upper level heat high. It's centered over West Texas right now. They're still getting some convection underneath it as you get some of the monsoon moisture kicking in, especially into New Mexico. That's going to slide a little bit farther to the West. I wish that would open the door for good disturbances and rain chances. But as I showed you earlier, unfortunately, that's just not the case. We also look to look to the east and uh, the Atlantic for Saharan dust this time of year and overhead you saw from the city cam picture and I'll share that with you again that we really have not much of a haze in the sky, very limited amounts of dust, trace amounts in our sky right now. And going forward, the computer models from NASA indicating maybe along the Gulf coastline Friday morning at sunrise, you'll notice a little bit of extra haze from that dust, nothing significant. And then by this time next week, there could be slightly higher amounts, but pretty light and nothing to worry about, even if you have a sensitive respiratory system. Look at that per perfect view of downtown from Crossroads, I-10 and 410. 101 feels like 104 with that dew point of 65. Stinson Airport feels like 108. Casterville 107. Even Comfort feeling like 109. These heat indices still elevated because these afternoon dew points are in the 60 degree range. Tomorrow we start the day at 80 degrees. Some clouds early and then another sunny day just like today. 103. It's going to feel like it's about 5 to 7 degrees warmer than the actual air temperature. So we're predicting a feels like tomorrow afternoon of about 108 for a few hours in the afternoon. Air temperature tomorrow on the south side 104 along with Pleasanton. Hondo 103 along with Seguin. But remember, 
at about five degrees for that feels like temperature. I wish I had some rain chances on here. Unfortunately, no percentages, just a lot of sunshine. And of course, it wouldn't be complete without a splitting squirrel. Of course. On this Monday. And I didn't mean anything personal by the, <laughs> the weather. It's just brutal. Outside. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So you know who else can splut for the rest of the summer? Wemby. Yeah. Did you see enough? No. Yeah. Did you, you, had, you satisfied? Well, he enough? was helping me get through the summer, but. Well, there you go. So, you know. yeah. Well, it's a good thing you saw enough because that's all you're going to see. Yeah. Done for the summer. Packing it up. Going on vacation after, after this trip to Vegas. We'll show you uh, some of the flashes of brilliance from the young man, though, when we come back. Also, when we come back, Larry Merritt's one on one with another one of the stars of camp so far. wants to hang his hat at the defensive end with this team, or at least build an identity that way. Wembenyama missing, got it back, and one. Wemby got off last night, and that'll be the last time you see him in summer league games. We heard from the Spurs earlier today that he will not play anymore, but he will stay with the team in Vegas. That was a familiar sight. Spurs got off to a very slow start in Victor Wimbanyama's second game in silver and black and last for the summer. The Spurs couldn't hit a casino, much less that basket. They only scored eight in the first quarter. Wimby had two. Second quarter, they started to climb out of the hole. The Blazers put him in. Spurs were down by as many as 19 at one point. Wimby scored nine straight, one of the wing, and he gets the rebound, put back, and there you go. Just kind of tip it to himself and slam it home. He looks like a giant compared to those guys. Victor's already in the paint, the break, gets the pass, slams another one, late in the fourth, Spurs make a run. They got close, but could not get close enough. Wimby had a chance to cut the lead down, but ew, that was kind of a strange one. Spurs lose 85-80, Wimby 27 points, 12 rebounds. First loss of the summer league for the Spurs after the game, Larry Mears caught up with Dominic Barlow. He scored 17 in the Spurs loss. All right, I'm here with Dom Barlow. And Dom, Summer League is all about learning. What did you and the team learn tonight? Um, we learned that we got to just, you know, keep competing and fighting. You know, we had a really bad first half. We couldn't make a shot. We're never getting a lot of stuff in transition. But, you know, I think we're learning how to fight and, you know, keep competing to the very end. So, What do you think caused the first half offensive struggles? Um, we're still all just figuring each other out. Um, we got a huge piece that just came in. And uh, we're all learning. He's super talented. So we're all trying to, you know, figure out how to play with him and find his strengths and, you know, the things that he's really great in the basketball court. So we're just, you know, trying to play off him and let him get confident and really get into the system. And tell me about his performance tonight. I mean, he had a double-double, uh, 27 points and 12 rebounds. Uh, I mean, he was phenomenal. He could have came in and, you know, he, he didn't have the best offensive game last time, so he could have came in and, you know, started to second-guess himself. But he was super confident from the jump, but he also played within the team, made the right play, mo like, pretty much the whole game, and he was successful. Talk about your game tonight. I mean, I feel like you had a really good game, really beast mode out there, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to compete, you know, trying to prove myself every day. You know, nothing's guaranteed in this league, so, you know, got to always compete and earn everything. Dom, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. You. All right, man, back to you. Thanks, Larry. Vic's team's going to have to get along without him because he's done for the summer. Wizards, Spurs Tuesday, 930. Spurs and Pistons Friday at 730. We'll be right back. Thank you so much for being with us this last half hour. We're going to see you right back here at 6 o'clock. World News is up next. See you at 6. See you.